Welcome to BaseballGuys.com. I'm your host, Ray Flowers. Trade today. Yeah, big, big trade. Well, not so much between the Giants and the Cubs. In fact, the Giants and the Cubs were playing each other tonight, so the player involved in this trade, all he had to do was walk across the field, go to the other clubhouse, and get a New Jersey. Who is that player? It's Mike Fontenot, formerly of the Cubs, and now on the Giants. Now he was traded for a minor leaguer that's kind of unimportant at this point from a fantasy perspective. So let's focus on Fontenot and what he brings to the Giants. Yeah, he can steal a base every once in a while. He plays a decent defense. He can play a little bit of second, a little bit of third, maybe even shortstop in a pinch. Hit you about 280. That's really about it. Now, the reason the Giants did this move is uh, Edgar Renteria had to be placed on the disabled list with biceps tendonitis. They hope he'll be back in two weeks, but they're not sure what's going to happen there. Because of that injury, Juan Uribe is going to have to be the everyday shortstop, which leaves them without that middle infield option off the bench. They deem Fontenot an improvement to the guys they have in the minor leagues to fill that role. So Mike Fontenot, be with the Giants, only has value in NL leagues. Even then, it's not much, especially when Renteria returns, which will really put Fontenot down on the bench for the Giants as they continue to try to win the NL West. Curtis Granderson, he's been pretty bad this year, folks. He's barely hitting 230s. He's actually hitting 239 right now. He's hitting 206 with an OPS of 518 against left-handed pitching. Now, he's always had struggles against lefties, but that's pretty awful. He's, and since he struggled so much overall, the team has made the decision to quote-unquote revamp his swing. What does that mean? I don't know. Now, players who switch their swing in the middle of the season have never had a lot of success. I can't even think of a guy who's done that during a season and really had a lot of success with it. That's something that really needs to be done with repetitions, and the only time you can do that is in the off season. You can tweak something, you can change the position of your hands, you can change the way you approach the ball, but as far as retooling a swing, that's not something you can do in the middle of the season. Hopefully, whatever is being done with Granderson will help him be somewhat effective against lefties, and geez, help him be an effective all-around hitter, because like I said, he has really struggled at the dish for the majority of the 2010 season. Ryan Braun, hitter who struggled and then recently got hot, hurt his wrist, and that is the issue with Ryan Braun of the Brewers. Now that wrist of his has kept him on the sidelines for a couple of days. He was able to take batting practice today. Again, not a big deal taking batting practice, but for a guy who's had a wrist issue, doing some baseball related activities for the first time in a couple days is a really good sign. The Brewers anticipate having Braun back by the end of the week Keep those fingers crossed that it happens, those of you out there that are brawn runners. Gordon Beckham, he's got an injured groin. Uh, it's kept him out of the lineup for a couple of days, but he's back in action now for the White Sox. They're going to play it pretty safe with him. Don't look for him to steal any bases. Don't look for him to do anything out of the ordinary, try to stretch a double into a triple or anything like that. But he'll be back in fantasy lineups because he's back for the White Sox. He qualifies at second and third in all leagues at this point. He was extremely hot since the All-Star break after a horrible start to the year. Uh, he's hitting over 370 actually since the All-Star game. Get Gordon Beckham back in your lineup if you have day-to-day -day lineups because he is now back and playing and swinging a fairly hot bat for the White Sox. Placido Polanco, another player, infielder who qualifies at multiple positions, second and third. Another guy who's done very well of late. He's hitting over 320 the past couple of weeks. The difference is Polanco's hitting 320 over the course of the season. Now he doesn't have ideal power for third baseman, he doesn't steal many bases, but he gives you that batting average and should score you a fair amount of runs hitting in what could be a potent lineup with the Phillies if they can ever get everyone healthy and going at the same time. The issue with Polanco is his elbow. It's caused him some time on the disabled list already this year. He's going to have to have that arm looked at. He now says he'll probably need surgery on the elbow at the end of the season. At least that's the hope that he'll be able to play through this, not need any other stints on the disabled list, and not require anything more serious than a cortisone shot. If you're a Polanco owner, keep your fingers crossed that the batting average might will stay in your batting lineup for the rest of the season. The Astros. Yeah, the Astros came out and said, look, Matt Lindstrom's our guy. He's been our closer all year. We're going to stick with him even though he struggled a bit. Well, that was yesterday. Today, they came out and said, look, he's had back issues for a couple of days, and we're going to give him a couple of days off. What does that mean? That means Brandon Lyon was given a three-year, $15 million deal in the offseason, ostensibly to be an eighth or ninth inning guy, will get a chance in the ninth inning. So what does he do in his first opportunity? He blows the game, of course. Now, you can't put this all on his shoulders. He was forced to intentionally walk a couple of batters. He was removed from the game. Uh, a couple of the guys that he had put on base were allowed to score. But the bottom line is, Lyon pitched a, uh, he pitched, he gave up five runs an inning and a third. That's not going to get it done in any league. It's not going to get it done in any format. It's kind of a free-for-all right now. If you need a guy for the next couple days, you've got to go Lyon because he's the guy that's out there. But still hold on to Lindstrom. Looks like he shouldn't have a problem reclaiming his job once his body is back to being healthy. And finally, Matt Kemp, 
He's out of the lineup again for the second day in a row. This wouldn't be a big issue normally, but there's not any talk of an injury at this point. With the issue uh, in June where he was benched, either because of just horrible work at the dish and on the base pass, or because of arguing with the, the, the coaching staff. Is this another situation with Kemp where he's being held out of the lineup because of either one of those issues? He hasn't been very good of late. There's more about that at the article attached to this video at rumorzone.com where I kind of broke down the issue. Matt Kemp not in the lineup for the second day. And when Manny Ramirez comes back, it's going to be very interesting to see how the Dodgers work that out. Now that they have Scott Pitsenik also in the mix, along with Andre Ethier. Ray Flowers, BaseballGuys.com. Thanks for joining me here on Around the Horn. I'll talk to you all again soon.